Hey everybody, welcome back. It's some Isaac. Um, I don't want to set the precedent that there's going to be daily videos. That kind of got me in trouble for like, mm, I don't know, nine years or something. Um, but the reason there were no Isaac episodes the last several days is first, look, I'm not scared. First, um, my, my wife and my daughter were ill. So I said, you know what, it's going to take, it, it, always it just make it adds a little, a certain wrinkle of difficulty into the, uh, that's a great pill actually, into the um, domestic life, you know, because the thing is, and, and this is not, I'm really not trying to divide uh, or draw a dividing line between parents and non-parents, I'm simply trying to illustrate, you know, when, when you're sick and you don't have a kid, or at least when I was sick, when I didn't have a kid, kind of sit on the couch, you know, watch some movies. When you, and uh, admit, admit, uh, instantly I'm trying to dr uh, draw a dividing line. So I apologize for lying to you a second ago. But I, I remember it. I remember it wistfully with a little bit of um, uh, of envy towards those that are going through it right now. I mean, I don't envy the fact that you're ill if you're going through it, but being able to be like, ah, you know what? I think today is just a Netflix day. I, uh, after the, my wife and, and our baby got sick, or our toddler, I guess I should say at this point, you know, is basically like a few days of taking care of a sick toddler and then taking care of a toddler while you're sick with the disease that your toddler gave you. Yeah, did I phrase that right? <laughs> it's basically, sure, well, let's give it a shot here. It's, it's a little like, um being forced to be the caretaker of the person who is going to harm you. <laughs> you know? Not that my toddler was trying to harm me, but she had some kind of respiratory illness. Um, the CDC is like, oh, you gotta isolate if at all possible. Oh wait, they're two years old? Well, uh, rip to you. Good, nice knowing you, bozo. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, ride it out. I hope you got a, a supply of tissue boxes. Anyway, so... Wouldn't you know it, um, she was sick and my wife was sick, so I, I had a little bit of some extra lifting. And then I got sick with the stuff that she had when I was taking care of her, so then now I got a little bit sick. So that's why I missed a couple of days, but honestly, we're, we're back to it. I'm still, uh, I'm not 100%, but just to be honest with you, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I got nothing better to do. But I, like, I got stuff that I could do, but I don't really like want to do it. Does that make more sense? I'm just gonna head down here. I could go to the curse room or whatever. Like I got some forms I could fill out. I got like some, I got some work I could like get ahead of or whatever, but like that doesn't appeal to me right now. What appeals to me right now is, is playing some video games. So we might as well like bundle that with the, the sense of seeming productive and, uh, and hopefully it's a win-win. It's kind of the spirit of this whole thing to begin with. Like, uh, again, this is not genuinely, I, I, I have a good life. I'm not suggesting, like, I'm playing a tiny violin here, but I, I came back, you know, I took a sick day on Monday. I came back to stream today. First thing someone said to me that I saw was, uh, hey, did you catch up on House of the Dragon on your sick day yesterday? No, let me tell you how I spent my sick day yesterday. <laughs> I uh, didn't ride the Peloton because I was sick, uh, and I think that's good. And I said, my throat's really sore and my voice is hoarse, so I'm not going to stream um, because I think that overall, it, it's not that I couldn't have mustered the energy, it's more that just like I think it would have been deleterious to my respiratory health to talk so much. Um, and then I looked after our sick baby, not all day because my wife was also home, but, but for much of the day. It was pretty much just like a normal day uh, where I, rather than work, I was the... I was the daycare, because she couldn't go to daycare because she was sick. So that's, and again, by the way, I had a great day. My wife took an amazing video of our daughter holding a piece of pasta. And then she says, what's that? And my daughter says, farfalle. And I was like, holy cow. I mean, I taught it to her. I'm just amazed she remembers and can identify the pasta shape, especially because most people just call it a bow tie. And then she has like a little, I bought her a toy, I don't know, like three months ago, that's um, like fake macarons and they're Velcroed so you can make, like they're like, you know, blue macaron with blue filling, but you can switch them out so you could have like blue macaron with like chocolate filling. And then she was like, look at my macarons, mommy. And I was like, we gotta 
like, honestly, our baby's a little out of touch. Why is our two-year-old talking about... She's giving, like, the real name of a food in Italian. She's she's not saying, like, look at this cookie. She's saying, look at this macaron. Like, I'm just going to say it. I think I've accidentally raised a snob. <laughs> now, she's still... She'll eat, like, a Kinder Surprise, you know? She's not... Uh, She'll, she'll eat, a, a, like, a chocolate chip cookie from the grocery store or something like that. But I worry if, the, if she's this snobby at age two, I don't know what's in her future, you know? Like, she's so snobby when we go through the McDonald's drive-thru. We get her a Happy Meal. She only eats the fries. She won't even touch the chicken nuggets, man. What am I... And then I've, then I've got to eat four extra chicken nuggets. Okay, fine. I'll, I guess if I got to... Oh, if you got to... Do you, uh, do you rip them from my cold, dead hands. I guess, sure, if you're going to force my hand, I guess I'll eat some chicken McNuggets or something like that. I guess I'll like, turn my 10-piece into, like, a, a 13 or a 14-piece, depending on how much she chooses to eat. So, anyway, that was pretty much, like, my weekend. We also went to the mall. Yeah, I don't really want this, but... Oh, wait, you know what? This is a blessing, because I ruined my battery charges by turning them into bombs anyway, so we don't have to go back. We can go to our shop and see what they got. We went to the mall. Um, this was before I knew I was sick, when I felt like a normal guy so long ago. Never mind, we will be walking back. We went to the mall. I enjoy the mall. I don't go to the mall very often. That's probably why I enjoy the mall. I was talking to my wife about how, like, I feel like we're, even though she's four years younger than me, three, three years younger than me. It depends. She'll say four, I say three, because I want to seem younger. It's that if you subtract the birth years, it's four. But I'm a late 88, and she's an early 92. So that's like a... Come on. I'm saying three years. We spend most of the year being three years apart. On our tombstones, people will be like, he was four years older. Until he died, and then she outlived him by like 21 years. Just like, just guessing anyway. Um... But regardless, what was I... Oh, I was talking to her about how I think, like... I feel like we're, like, the last generation of mall goers. I don't love the mall. I don't have, like, like an 80s affinity for the mall. Like, I never saw uh, Tiffany perform I Think We're Alone Now at the mall or anything like that. There was only one... No, 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 no. This is fine. That's why I did it. Um, but I, you know, it was kind of like... It was a bit of a social hangout in my generation it was also like you know when you live in the suburbs the mall is like important because you don't live in like a walkable city where you can just go to stores you have to like drive your car to a concrete slab with two lines painted beside it leave your car and then go inside to the building where all the stores choose to live so you know you're kind of like a victim of circumstance you had no choice but to go to the mall and as a result you ascribe some meaning to the mall as a consequence of that um Nowadays, I feel, and I feel like this is like the, it's a good thing, <laughs> to be honest. It's not like a, oh, back in my day, people respected the mall. Now, won't somebody be nice to the mall? You're hurting the mall's feelings. But with the advent of, you know, buying things online and, uh, you know, various cultural changes, people are, like, more interested in buying things locally, less interested in buying something that comes from, like, an international chain of fast fashion brands trying to sell you uh, a t-shirt where you go, wow, $4.99 for a t-shirt, that's amazing, until you realize, like, it disintegrates after two spin cycles. Um, I feel like the mall's a bit of an antiquated concept now. I gotta tell you, I, again, I think it's that the grass, I'm not gonna say the grass is always greener, but I think, like, when all you see is grass, Sometimes you want to see some weeds, right? Like when I lived in the suburbs and the mall was where I like bought all my clothes. Whenever I was in a big city, I was like, oh my God, look at this big city. Like they have stores that, where you can buy clothes that are not just old navies. Like they have actual, like this store is just called like, like Geno's. Holy cow. I didn't know you could do that. You can walk, to, hey, you don't like this uh, menswear store? Walk down the street for two seconds. There's another menswear store. Now, I live in a city like that, and instead, I, I, I'm like a tourist when I go to the mall. I'm like, holy cow, they got a KFC up in this. I gotta get a, a two-piece with fries. I'll just take that. It's, uh, I mean, it's... You always, I'm not gonna say you always want what you don't have, but you're always interested in what you don't have, at the very least, I think. There's things I don't have that I don't want. Like that uh, coffee where, like, doesn't, like, a, a monkey eat coffee beans and then poop them out? 
I don't have that and I don't want that. So I don't buy into the idea that you always want what you don't got. But you sometimes overrate things you don't have. And I think the mall is a classic example of that. By the way, this mall did not have a KFC inside of it. But it did have a, uh, a Nando's knockoff. So you know I got some, uh, some Piri Piri chicken. That's about it. I don't have anything else to say about the mall. There's not, I mean, what do you, I bought some shorts, I bought some socks. I would say the mall, one of the, one of the best places on earth to buy shorts and socks. If you need underwear, shorts, and socks, it's goaded. I know you probably have a local business near you. Hey, NL, you should come to Raleigh. In Raleigh, we've got, we got the Shoe and Sock Emporium. It's owned by a 74-year-old man. His entire life has just been making socks and, and gym shorts that you can wear on your stationary bike. Okay, but I'm not... Listen! I went to Sport Check. I'm not afraid to say it, okay? I will say the mall's a little spooky now, too. I don't know if it's always been spooky, but... You know how, like, Dawn of the... Not Dawn of the Dead, but, um... No, it is Dawn of the Dead. The the zombie movie that takes place in a mall. You're like, whoa, this is so creepy. Normally, the ball, the mall is like a, a bustling metropolis. It's got people from all walks of life. Because everybody, you know, needs to get dress shirts and, you know, lotions from the body shop and stuff like that. It's the great unifier. And now, in this movie, it's all inhabited by The Walking Dead. Well, it's really just like what the mall is like in uh, 2022. Like, it's barren, it's a liminal space. You see, I, w I was getting looks, and I know how that sounds, but I, I mean it sincerely. Like, people were looking at me. I think they knew that I wasn't from around there. Like, I'm from Vancouver, or at least I live in Vancouver. And we were out in Burnaby. We were out in the sticks. That's a joke. Burnaby's also a, it's a pretty big city in and of itself. Um, and it's only like, you know, 15, 20 minutes away from Vancouver to begin with. That it's, it's, listen, it's a joke. I'm, I'm just trying to stunt on the Burnaby dwellers, the Burnabarians, okay? I'm just, I'm making a joke. Regardless. I just, I don't know, I felt kind of uncomfortable. I felt like, I, I, although I was enjoying myself, I was like, this is a hostile environment. Take me back to Nordstrom's. West Virginia, Mountain Mama. Yes? Yes? <coughs> Sorry, I forgot when I use this. I don't really want to use it now, because I thought I would have had a damage upgrade by now that would have made it so it's easier for me to figure out where to go, but uh, or, or to get there faster at the very least. That was my whole weekend, by the way. It was going to the mall. Goathead's pretty sick, though. And I went to the park with my daughter. That's it. And honestly, I'm, I, I gotta wait till I get better, but I'm enjoying this park season because autumn and then winter finally came to Vancouver very quickly. The weather is not inhospitable, but it's less hospitable than it used to be, and the park is empty, man. I don't know, are you normal, or did you grow up like I grew up? That where, like, your parents would be like, oh, we can't go to a restaurant, it's dinner time, there's gonna be a lot of people there. Like, I grew up under the impression that businesses were not equipped to handle everyday demand. Like, you couldn't possibly go to a, a restaurant between 5.30 and 7 p.m. That's crazy. What do you guys think? Do you want to get, like, an early lunch today? You want to go to the, you want to go to the restaurant at 4.45? Yeah, sure, it probably shouldn't be too busy. What do you think? You want to go get, like, a... Why, why don't we just have something, like... Why don't we have a big lunch, and then we'll get, like, a little midnight snack when the restaurant clears out around, like, 8.15, maybe something like that? Here's, and, and listen, I'm from a city that in some ways, like, fetishizes waiting. People wait around a lot in Vancouver. They'll wait, you know, an hour to get into a brunch place sometimes. Sometimes it's worth it, sometimes it's not. It has changed me in the sense that, uh, there's actually some solid items here. I, uh, listen, I would never go to, like, a restaurant, and if, if I was like not sold on it, if they were like, it's gonna be an hour wait, I would be like, no, nah, I'm gonna go someplace else. But honestly, if they were like, it's gonna be a half hour wait, I'd be like, yeah, let's, let's let it ride. Rather than walk out and discuss for 15 minutes where we'd rather go and then we get to that restaurant and maybe that restaurant is a 15 minute wait, I'll wait for 30 minutes to, to eat at a restaurant just out of inertia. 
But when I was a kid, oh man, my parents did not do that. You walk into a restaurant, and I think it's like a smaller town thing. If you walk into a restaurant and they're like, it's going to be a five minute wait, you have to take like a tribal council. What do you think? You think we should go to a different place? Five minutes? I mean, do they not want our business? 15 minutes is like... That's not even a wait. That's what you should expect, I think, from walking into the door to sitting down. At least in, in the city. 30 minutes is where you start to be like, okay, we can at least pull out our phones. Anything over that, you gotta like... I mean, give them a complimentary glass of, of the house wine or something like that. Come on. Listen, I just decided like halfway through this, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm going to go down on the next floor. <laughs> I want to be in the video. I just don't want to... I don't want to do that big room. I should be using Book of Shadows to walk into enemies, though, for sure. But yeah, that was basically it. But now, like, I, I love going to the park when there's no other kids and parents at the park. Because honestly, the worst part of the park, next to the fact that they're still making slides out of, like, uh, aluminum. So in the summertime, if it's been sunny, which it has a tendency to be uh, during the summertime, uh... The slides are like so hot you could actually fry an egg on them or alternatively just get like a, you know, a burn on your skin or your, your child's skin. The other worst part of being at the park, apart from the aluminum slides, is other parents and their kids, honestly. My kid never has a problem with herself. Anytime there's a problem, it's always the result of some, you know, interpersonal conflict, which makes sense, obviously, but I'm just saying. To not have to wait for, uh, you know, a, a kid to get off a swing, to use the swing, to to be able to play with your toys in the sand. And listen, I got no problem when we bring sand toys to the park and then some other kids come over and, and want to use the sand toys. We always say, like, you know, as long as their parents are like, can you ask nicely? You got to do the whole charade because I'm not going to say no, but their parent will be like, you know, can you ask nicely if you can use the sand toys? And I'll say, yes, you could use the sand toy. But then sometimes, like, you're like, man, I really wish these people would finish using the sand toy because I got to get the heck out of the park. You know, we were only supposed to stay for, like, another five minutes. It's been ten minutes. And now I got to, like, go over to this kid that's having a great time with the sandcastle-making kit and be like, sorry, buddy, we got to get out of here. I get Like, basically, it's a normal human interaction, but I'm basically choosing to make that parent's life harder. I'm going to go, hey, just so you know, your kid's going to cry and they're not really going to understand why. <laughs> You're going to have to explain it to them. Sometimes people are going to need their toys back before you're ready to give them back. I want that, actually. I decided I want that. It was a great time to have 90 cents, huh? Sure. Sure, why not? Does that not cycle? I thought that's what Birthright did for Isaac. Maybe it doesn't work yet. Here, let's let's go back for our item room. This is a good run now. It's nice to just have the park to yourself. It's like how I've said before, like, man, the roads are not the problem with traffic. The problem is that everybody wants to drive. If everybody stopped driving and only I could drive, oh, man, the roads would be incredible. That's what the park is like in, like, uh, November, which is not quite yet, but... November through, like, the end of February here. It's beautiful. Everybody's flying their kids to Hawaii or something like that. Oh, we did Hawaii last year. We're going to do Saipan this year. Okay, well, congrats. You can catch me down at Dude Chillin' Park. Pushing my kid on the slide in 2 degrees Celsius weather. Okay, we'll take Sai Fly. I say Psy the Fly, or just in my head, I think I had By the Way by the Red Hot Chili Peppers in my head for some ungodly reason. Psy the Fly, I'll be the guy that takes you from the room. Wow, 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 wow. Psy Fly, to go to go to go to do do seven seals, do 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 champ belt, do 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 synth oil, do do do. You could you can make By the Way with just Isaac items, no doubt about it. I'm not going to do it, though, because I'm sick, so I have justification. I don't have to be funny today, okay? I'm sick. I'm not, uh, well, actually, I'm twisted. Sick implies there's a cure. Standing in line to see the show tonight, and there's a goat head. <laughs> head of goats. 
Side the fly, I'll be the guy who takes you. Sorry. Sometimes I get a little... Just get a little into it. I didn't do much on my sick day yesterday either, just to be honest. There's a lot of, like, you know... Oh, that's not what I meant to take. I don't even want this stuff. Wait. Wait. Let's take Twisted Pair. We lose our Angel Room chance, but the extra DPS is nice. It's basically, you know, when your kid's not in daycare, guess who becomes the daycare? Is you. So, like, basically, I was the... It, do you see the hypocrisy here? This is a joke. I would like to... Northern Lion Studios would like to acknowledge that what is about to follow is an act of comedy and is not meant to cause any... It's The joke is, what if he was this out of touch? My daycare worker, when she's sick, oh, I can't look after your kid today, I'm sick. Uh, me when I'm sick and my kid is sick. You, oh, you can't bring your sick kid to daycare. Um, you have to look after her. Make it make sense, Justin Trudeau. Yeah, I don't really have like a point. The point is, I guess, is your kid. Yeah, that makes sense. No, I, the joke is what if? What if he farted? Okay, hold on. I would like to get toxic shock. Not in real life. That would be messed up. But not a real green dress. That's cruel. Life's too short to care about these spikes. Honestly, I've 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 done it. I've I've uh, been there, bought the T-shirt. Okay. Now I'm all about getting the move on. You know what? Book of Shadows uh, and E. coli. Name a better combination. I don't know. Salmonella and Campylobacter. Good one. Infested. That's a little super infested. I think we keep the stars card and we go to the, the boss trap room. We are not going to make it. <laughs> we have like seven seconds. I still... We don't need gulp. We've already gulped two, right? I think we're, we're, we're popping off. Anyway, that's pretty much all I got. I didn't really get up to much. I did finish The Mole on Netflix. What are my thoughts on The Mole on Netflix? If you think you would like watching The Mole on Netflix, you should watch it. Because I can't deny, it certainly was moly. I, that's not an indictment, by the way. I don't think that it's a, a bad show. In fact, I thought it was, a, by reality TV standards... You know, Survivor goes on for like three months of once a week, one hour long episodes. The Mole was like a breezy seven episodes that were roughly half an hour long each. That's an easy show to watch if you're looking for some... Not something to sit down and watch, but if you're looking for some second monitor material. Yeah, I would say I regret that. If you're asking me honestly, I would say that, yeah, I probably regret that one. If you're looking for some from, for some second monitor material, that's my that's my advice to you. If you're looking for some first monitor material, I'm not the guy to ask. I'm a big fan of going to bed lately. I know, but I've already done the bit. I know there's a lot of good stuff out there I've not seen. Have I told you my my content preferences? My content preferences, people sometimes ask, why do you watch so much garbage? One reason is that I do find garbage entertaining. Um, it depends on the garbage. Like, I, I'm not... And there was a time where I watched some 90 Day Fiance, don't get me wrong. But I'm not into, like, the super fabricated reality TV that's like, you know, oh, we have to go on a grocery store trip and, like, look at all the drama that ensues en route to the grocery store. Like, I already live that every day. I don't need to watch it on TV. Um... But I do like to watch things that are obviously not good because the only time that I really sit down and watch Netflix is when I'm like setting YouTube thumbnails and stuff like that. It sounds backwards, for sure, but like I would rather watch more crap than watch good things but not pay close attention to them. Because that seems like you're, you're wasting your time. To put on like a good movie, and then ignore it while you're you're setting like YouTube metadata or something like that. That seems foolish. To put on a bad movie and ignore it while like you get some quote unquote homework done. That seems like good time management. 
Am I right or am I wrong? I'm getting a lot of wrongs here. I'm, I'm being told that I'm wrong. I'm being told I'm incorrect. Hold on, I added a little shiver. I don't think I want any of these. I think I'd rather just donate some money, honestly. We're not going to need it. So you might say, hey, have you seen everything everywhere all at once? No, I have not. You know what I have seen recently? Um, Out Cold. <laughs> Starring a, a pre-otherworldly level of fame due to the hangover, Zach Galifianakis. What happens in that movie? Oh my god, that hurt. I wanted the blood bag. Uh, couldn't tell you. Don't remember anything at all. But I have seen the video it made. The thumbnail it made. And it is magnificent. It's a little riff on that old Michael Caine quote about uh, Jaws 4. Michael, Michael! How could you be in a movie as bad as Jaws 4? I haven't seen Jaws 4. By all accounts, it is a terrible film. But I have seen the house it built. And it is magnificent. Reminds me of uh, current most highly paid Vancouver Canucks uh, player, JT Miller. Listen, I, I don't want to get sports pilled on you. Canucks have been having not, not the best time lately, to put it politely. I really thought we were going to get the permanent whore Babylon state there, but apparently not. Apparently I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, I guess it's the bone heart. The bone giveth and the bone taketh away. Excuse me. Uh, we're, we might actually be in trouble here. Anyway, people th were so uh, upset with the team, they threw their jerseys on the ice. There, there was like three or four jerseys that got thrown on the ice on in Saturday night's game. The captain, Bo Horvat, when asked about it, said, Last year, people threw my jersey on the ice. It's It'll stick with me for the rest of my life. It's the kind of thing that you never forget. Um, Current most highly paid Vancouver Canucks player, JT Miller, when asked the same question, said, It's none of my business if people want to waste their money, come to the games, and throw their S asterisk, asterisk, asterisk on the ice, then it's not my it's not my concern. Well, you know what? Someone in chat said it best. They said, unfortunately, he's right. <laughs> I'm not, listen, I'm not saying people should rag on JT Miller. It is, at the end of the day, it's just entertainment. And honestly... Like, I know how it sounds. I'm sure he's trying his best. You know, he seems like a competitive guy. I don't think any professional athlete is, like, going out there and will... Well, I don't think many professional athletes, at least, are going out there and, like, willfully being like, you know what I'm going to do this season? I'm just going to suck. You know, I'm sure that most of them would prefer to, you know, have a career that lasts forever and continue to be extremely well paid for, you know, playing with toys. I say that as a, as a noted sports fan. But uh, it's, it's not the sort of thing you want to hear when your team's struggling. It's like, yeah, sure, throw your jersey on the ice. See if I care. Although, I will say, I was laughing. Because, um, you know, whenever, this happens all the time. Whenever, like, uh, somebody throws a jersey on the ice, someone will say, wow, can you imagine throwing a $300 piece of merchandise onto the ice? I would never. See, that's where you got it wrong. It's only $300 when you're buying it. When you hold it, it's essentially worth nothing. Like if you were to sell it at a at your garage sale or something like that, you might get you might get 20 bucks. I don't know, if a super fan came and it you, you it's an authentic jersey, you might even be able to get like 50 bucks for it. But it's only 300 bucks when it's the team store selling it to you. It's not 300 bucks when you you're 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 not throwing 300 bucks onto the ice. Unfortunately, I, I hate to pop your bubble as someone who owns some jerseys myself. Would I throw uh, any of my jerseys onto the ice? Listen, probably. <laughs> if things got bad enough, no, I wouldn't. Mostly because, not because I don't want to let make my. Uh, discontentedness known but mostly i don't want to like cause a problem for the game or the ice crew you know i don't want to like it's already like a, a tough event to run i don't think you should throw anything onto the ice except a hat trick if someone scored three goals that being said i could probably part with uh the radim verbata jersey that we bought for kate at the first game of the 2015 nhl playoffs in that series versus calgary she really liked Radim Verbata. He went on to, uh, he was the highest scoring Canuck that season. He went on to have an incredibly disappointing 
second year, uh, and then be lost at free agency for absolutely nothing. And is he's not hated, but he's not that he's not that well respected in the Canucks oeuvre, okay? Now, the Henrik Sedin jersey is not going on the ice. The Besser jersey is not going on the ice. And the, the black skate jersey that still does not have an embroidered name on the back is not going on the ice either, okay? I've, I've been saving the back of that jersey for a new hero to um, arrive. Let's see if we trade the whole team. Listen, I don't mean to get so sports-pilled, okay? I just, I, it's how I, I got myself on the topic of conversation. I'd like to apologize. Also, you should, if you love Isaac and you hate hockey, you should be glad I'm talking about high, hockey because it's making my Isaac better. I'm doing better as a result of not having to focus on the game and not say things like, well, now I'm going to shoot to the right. Now I'm going to move to the left and I'm going to shoot down. Now I'm going to move up and I'm going to shoot to the left. I'm not going to fight Mega Satan. That's for certain. I will get Polyphemus. I will get number two. I'm not going to get Isaac's heart. Technology 2? I think I could do with Technology 2 here. Even though it's a damage downgrade. Or or it isn't, apparently. I don't really want Yum Heart or Isaac's heart. I wouldn't mind 9 lives, though. Hey, you get away from me! You get away from me! Not to quote the Ocean Breed Salty or whatever. Okay, I, we should win, actually. Like, it looked a little rough, but it seems like it's it's going to be fine. Good, uh, bad pills. I'm excited, but this gives us a black card. And then just pop another one immediately after. And you know we got to go through the big room. When in doubt, if, if the shortest path does not take you to the boss room, you want to go through the big room. It's just science. It's a simple calculus. Hey, you can't fly. Unlike these guys, you can't fly. Why are you walking on the freaking, uh, on top of some creep like a fool? Like it's your first day playing Isaac. Like you don't have real platinum god. So anyway, that's like basically it. That's basically what's been going on. And there used to be like a certain sense of, um, like when you get over a sickness, there used to be a sense of like, um, Oh, now that that illness is done, we might not have to deal with another one for like, you know, six months or something like that. I remember saying insane things like, you know, sometimes just having like a little cold is like a novelty. Because you get to just lay down and watch some movies. Isn't that cool? It's like you have an excuse to do nothing. Now, let me tell you, life comes at you fast when you, your kid's in daycare. I'm like batting down the hatches, honey. It's not even, this is like the third time she's been sick since the start of October. It's presently October 25th. I was blessed to only get sick once out of those three, but it's not getting any easier, let me tell you. We got a long way to go until the spring shows up. Why not? Luck immediately paying dividends. Look at this. Look at this. You can't stop that. You can't coach that. I don't want any of this. I want this right here. Also, the greatest Poke Go of all time. It's insane. We won. It wasn't even a, a, in question at the end of that. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I think we'll be back tomorrow with another one, and I'll see you next time. See ya.